Here we're going to be going over issuing and exercising stock options using the fair value pricing model, which uses the stock option price as the accounting basis here. So for example here in 11X1, Corp A adopted a stock option plan here where they granted options to their executives to purchase 40,000 shares of $10 per share par common stock here. Now the options were granted here in 11X2 and were exercisable here two years after the date that they were granted if the um, executive or the employee if they were still employed by the company here and they would expire here after six years now this is going to require a two and would require a two-year vesting or service period here by the um, executives that are employed now the option price here is set at eighty dollars per share and a compensation expense here is estimated at 1.2 million dollars based on this fair value pricing model here what the company is saying is they ex based on what they're experiencing here they're expecting that these options are going to cost them 1.2 million dollars here when these executives uh, exercise these options. Now uh, last point here all the options were exercised here and they were all exercised during 20x4 here. Uh, 30,000 shares here were exercised on 11x4 when the market price per share was $134 and the remaining 10,000 shares here were exercised on 51x4 when the market price here per share here was $154. Now the um, for our other point here is the employees perform their services equally here uh, during the vesting period here 20x2 and 20x3. Okay so let's go and look at how we would calculate this or how we would uh, record this. Okay here we're going to be using the fair value option method here where the market price of the stock has really no relevance what we're going to be looking at is it's going to be based on the stock option price here of eighty dollars per share that the company is gave as a stock option price here. So this is the case here where these options are granted here on 11x2 and we got that two year vesting or service period that's required here before these options can be um, exercised here. And the stock options are going to be exercised during 20x4 and we'll look at how we make this entry. But the first thing we have to do here when we set up this this option plan or the stock option plan we have to uh, first set up our comp what we're going to call our compensation expense here on our income statement. This is what the company's expe expected they're going to have to pay in compensation to these executives. It's just like wages here but it's a little different because they're going to get this stock that they can buy into in the company. And based on this compensation expense we have to set up an equity account here and we're going to call it a paid in capital account here for those stock options. Paid in capital is on our balance sheet here. Compensation expenses here on our income statement. So what we have to do for this vesting period here for each of the next there's two year vesting period we're gonna we said that the services are pro provided equally over those two years so we know what the estimated expense on these uh, uh, stock options are the 1.2 million so I'll divide it by two here and we're going to allocate it at six six hundred thousand dollars per year as compensation expense here in income statement so for the end here of the first uh, vesting year here 1231 uh, x2 we debit or increase our compensation expense for six hundred thousand and then the next year here vesting period from uh, for the year at 1230 at the end of the year 1231 x3 we're going to debit or increase our compensation expense here by another six hundred thousand so what we've done up to this point on our income statement we recognize that total expense that uh, we're estimating on those stock options here 1.2 million dollars now that's all estimated here and expensed out here on income statement before any of the stock options are actually exercised. Now what we need is our debit here compensation expense on the income statement we need a credit here and we do that to a paid in capital account for those stock options. At the end of each year here uh, for our first year x2 here we would have credited that here for six hundred thousand dollars and that uh, balances with the debit here compensation expense here of six hundred thousand on our income statement. So we're paid in capital account here equity we credit that here for six hundred thousand same for the 1231 x3 you credit that here for six hundred thousand so we've got this total paid in capital up until this point before anything's optioned here is 1.2 million dollars and remember we recognize that as compensation expense here same total 1.2 million dollars over that vesting period okay so we, we've set up our paid in capital here 
and we uh, recognize their compensation expense. So now let's look at how we'd exercise, okay, when these stock options are actually exercised. And there again, they're op exercised here at the stated amount here of $80 per share. That's what the company says these employees can buy this stock at. So we're going to look here at 30,000 shares here in 11X4 that are exercised, and then the remaining 10,000 shares here on 51X4, they're exercised. So at the exercise date here, employees go out, executives go out and buy this stock, stock here. So what we do is uh, for cash, what we received here for first uh, date here, 30,000 shares here times the ex option price here of $80 per share, we debit our cash here for two point or $2,400,000. We have to take this paid-in capital account, and we're going to reduce it here, or debit it, or reduce our paid-in capital account here for the, the portion of the shares that were actually optioned. Our total uh, paid-in capital here was for 1.2 million. Now, 30,000 of the 40,000 shares here were optioned, so we have 30,000 shares here on 11x4 uh, here, and then 10,000 shares here on 51x4. So we have a total of 40,000 shares here. So the fractional amount here, three quarters of them, 30,000 divided by 40, three quarters of that amount here of the 1.2 million in our paid in capital account is going to be reduced here. That equals $900,000. So we debit our paid in capital account here for $900,000. Now moving up to the our common stock par account here. So um, remember 30,000 shares here, 30,000 common stock were issued here on 11x4. So we take 30,000 shares times the $10 per share par amount. So we credit or increase our common stock par amount here for $300,000. Now, same date here on 11X4, this is where we our additional paid in capital of common stock is going to get the balancing amount here between the cash we received here, our reduction of paid in capital, and our increase here in common stock par. So what we would do here, it's going to be uh, credited here for three million dollars and that's simply the fact that we had a uh, debit here at 2.4 million we re or increased our cash by that amount then we also had a debit here which reduced our paid in capital by nine hundred thousand so we got what is that a total here of uh, three million three hundred thousand here in our debits and then moving over to our common stock well we had the credit here nine hundred or uh, three hundred thousand in our for our power amount so then the other the three million here becomes the balancing entry. So we got three point or three million three hundred thousand in our credits here, which balances what our debits here of three point three million dollars. Now the next period here, same thing, same thing just repeated here. We have those ten thousand shares that are remaining at the eighty dollar option price here so we would have received cash here of eight hundred thousand dollars and then for our paid in capital we're just going to read we all of these stock or all of the options were exercised it's just so it's going to be the remaining amount here is going to be debited out which we can look at it in these terms here we're 1.2 million total paid in capital times that fractional amount here in this case we had 10,000 shares option over the total 40,000 so one quarter of quarter of those that paid in capital here equates to $300,000 so we debit our paid in capital here for 300,000 so our paid in capital is all zeroed out here at, on 5 1 X4 here when those stock options were exercised, the remaining number. So, again, common stock, same thing here. Uh, 10,000 shares here issued at $10 par, so we got 100,000 credit to our common stock here. And then again, the balancing amount to go through additional paid in capital for a common stock of $1 million. And that's simply a balancing entry here between the cash we received here of 800,000 debit, and then what we reduced here, our paid in capital here by uh, uh, debiting that here by 300,000. Just remember that the cash here is an asset, this paid in capital here is an equity account, so you got a reversing sign here. But you got, nonetheless, you got 800000 here plus 300000 here in your debits. That balances with our credits here and our equity account, our common stock power of 100000 plus the $1 million here in additional paid in capital. You got $1.1 million here in credits and balances $1.1 million here in your debits. Okay, so we've taken care of this. All right, so just remember here, 
when you're dealing with these this fair value option method here you're using the option price you're not using the uh, market price of the stock here and when you start this out you have whatever you have to do you have to determine what your compensation expense is and that's really taking uh, the fair value option method here somehow they have to come up with the compensation expense and that's allocated over the service period here or the compensate uh, over the service period or the vesting period. So you're going to recognize that expense here on your income statement for whatever that vesting period is. You have to divide those expenses up based on actually the service. In this case, it was an even amount for those, those two years of vesting. And then once we did that, we had to set up that paid in capital account, increase the stock options as an equity account here for whatever we had as our compensation expense here, that becomes our paid in capital st a stock option um, as an equity account here and then when the op options were actually exercised here then we increased the cash by whatever options were exercised and then we had to reduce our paid in capital for the stock options be based on whatever fractional amount here was exercised based on the total amount here that was sitting in our paid in the capital account that uh, amount here became what we would debit out or reduce our paid in capital account here and then remember the common stock that was, was, was actually issued so we take whatever par amount we would have to based on the issue number of shares issued and then whatever the balance flows into additional paid in capital here based on whatever cash debits we had here uh, increases here in our cash versus the debits or the decreases here in our paid in capital that had to balance with our credits here in our common stock par and then the um, well it had to whatever our debits here to our cash and a reduction in paid in capital has to balance with the credits here for our common stock par and then the additional paid in capital here of common stock here and you can see that this additional paid in capital becomes a balancing entry here okay so we've taken care of our example here where we use this uh, we use these we exercise some stock options here and we use this fair value method here uh, to uh, set up our compensation expense here and also the paid in capital account here. Okay, so we've taken care of this issuing and exercising stock options just using this fair value pricing model here and this is where again you use the stock option price here uh, rather than the market price here on the stock. Okay, so we've, we've discussed it here and we've gone through our example and so we'll conclude on that.